Hello everyone and welcome back to Who Booked This? We've got a very special guest joining us today, a very well travelled wrestler, performed all over the world, uh, his native Canada, uh, Europe, Japan, Mexico, he's been pretty much everywhere, he's won titles in a lot of places as well. Please welcome Speedball McBailey. <laughs> Hello! Oh yes, and as Muta says, me. mentioned on AEW. Yeah, that's right, Excalibur. Very uh, nice shout out, much appreciated. Okay, uh, I will do the thing. Well, I remember, I will go into the Discord chat and I will sort it so that you can see the game directly there, so that you're seeing it basically live as I see it without the Twitch delay. Aha, very good. Okay, so I managed to get two of the names you threw at me. Right. Uh, those names being Veda Scott and Mao. Yeah. That's uh, good because those were probably the two most important ones, to be honest. Yeah, I, All the other ones would have been great, but... Yeah, I did try to get uh, Team to Tabernak and uh, Andreza, but... Yes. It, it wasn't for happening, sadly. Uh, the regulars in my chat will know what it's like me, you know, try, trying every trick I can to get <laughs> some of the bookings to happen. Uh, it was. Oh yes, uh, the, I'm setting up the chat button now, Chainsaw. Uh, so, uh, with that said, are there any other names you would like you that you have in mind that you think, oh, they would go well on a show that I'm booking? Yes, uh, that I think you might not like. That I'm not certain will be there. Yes, uh, from WXW, Yearn Simmons and Rotation. Are they on there? Rotation, I don't know about, but Jorn Simmons, yes. Okay, very good. Uh, someone made a pretty decent uh, WXW roster. Although yes. I haven't updated it in a while, so um, let me have a look and see who we've got. And just, again, just making sure I've got them unlocked, <laughs> which means finding them on the list, which I'm not far away from. Because they're all bunched together. Right, where, 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 where? Da, 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 da. See, I'm just seeing right now on the list a bunch of. Uh, oh yeah, I'm a going. A bunch of names that I would have liked to book. I'm going. Um, it's I... the mod list I'm going through, uh, which is a different thing. Uh, right. So yes, Jorn Simmons got him. Uh, very good. Whether or not he says yes is another matter, but... <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> That's alright. See, I've got a whole list of backups, too. Right. Yeah, there he is. Gotta get Sexy Eddie and Bucks Belmar. I wish... Jorn Simmons I, I said no. Jorn Simmons <laughs> said no? Wow, okay. How dare I'm he? surprised, but also not surprised. Um, so someone in chat just brought up Sexy Eddie and Bucks Belmar. I I think it's very unlikely that they would be in the game. Although Sexy Eddie maybe not. Is Sexy Eddie in the game? Sexy Eddie is in the game. He is? He is. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Bucks Belmar, I don't think I've got. Right. But I know for a fact I've got Sexy Eddie. Very good. Okay, good. We're good. definitely using Sexy Eddie. Just the other week I was talking about him to uh, one Courtney Rush. See continues to be fantastic yeah, I it, love me some sexy Eddie he was posting pictures on social media of him basically looking like Brakowski from the old WCW game <laughs> very good as you would expect him to yep and he said yes by the way sexy Eddie is in good so are we booking this thing from the top down or from opener to main event or uh, well, we, we can deal with that when we get into the actual booking part but uh, in the meantime okay, if you've got any more names Yes, is the Green Phantom in this game? He is. Um, Wonderful. G amazing. Okay, very good. Again, oh, that I, makes me so happy. I need to find him on the list, but... Yes. Luckily, most of the independent people are in alphabetical order, so that makes that part <laughs> easy. <laughs> very helpful. I'm going to make a... Okay, Milkman's going to make a bunch of Quebec guys. That would be fantastic. <laughs> right. Green Phantom is in. Wonderful. What about Frankie the Mobster? 
I, he is in the game. Uh, yes. This oh, is, yes, okay, this is getting good. This is how it usually goes, by the way. Like, people generally book... Like, it's a usually a weird mix of, like, people they're friends with, favourite opponents, yes. and people they grew up watching. Right. That's, that's exactly what my thing is, so I figured uh, I was right on point with that. Frankie is in. Good. Is uh, PCP Crazy Manny in there? Good question. Uh, I will have a check. If if the Green Phantom is, but PCP Crazy Ethan Manny is not, then I'll, I'll have to let him know, and he's going to be real mad. I, I'm not. I don't see him. He might okay, be in, and I've ju he's just one of the ones that I've missed. So that yeah. may be on my part. No problem. <laughs> Um, it's like it's it's also like he didn't even have that many matches. He did for a while, but like <laughs> I don't think any. He did wrestle for CCW a little bit, so he might be known from there. Uh, is Kitsune in the game? I have definitely seen him before. The mysterious Kitsune make an appearance in there. I don't think I have Kitsune. Nudge wink. Uh. Yeah, no Kitsune, I'm afraid. Okay, yeah. That's fine. Um, so you said no on Asuka from Ice Ribbon or DDT, right? We only have... That was the one I forgot to check. Uh, Aha! Right, because I was that... Because I, I knew I already had that Asuka in the game. Yes. So I was more focused on... Uh, well, Asuka and Veda I knew I already had. So I was more focused right. on trying to get the other ones. Uh, give Good. me a second, I'll just make sure she's unlocked and we'll have a try. Mm. Crazy Manny versus Crazy, Crazy Steve, that would have been good. Which one of them's crazier? Yes. Uh, well, one's just crazy and the other one is PCP effing crazy. So <laughs> that says something. Beef Wellington, yes, the inventor of the ass punch. Drum roll for Asuka, is she in? No. No? <laughs> Having none of it. Wow, okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, other people then that I think might not be... Uh, do we have the Sendai girls? As a promotion, uh, they're not one of the ones I've got in the game, like, listed in the save as a promotion, but I do have a small... Sendai Girls roster uh, that's right. in the game. So they would show okay. up under free agents. Uh, right, okay. Dash, Chihiro, and Satomura. Meiko Satomura, I know, will say, or should say yes, because she's already been booked on one of the other shows. Beautiful. Yep, she's in. Good. <laughs> um, now, uh, what about Dash and. Let me have a look for Dash. Sako. By the way, I'm just so happy huh? that Frankie Mobster and the Green Phantom are in there. <laughs> so that, that makes my day. I'm not seeing Dash, which is weird, because I was sure I did have a Dash. Uh, It'd be surprising. I mean, she, she's very popular. I mean, there will be a Dash in the game. It's Again, it's maybe a case of just one of the ones I've missed. Right. It was like, as you can see here, clearly I went on a Joshi, uh, yeah, Joshi download Legend craze <laughs> at one point. Another Kaboy Kwa, uh, Kevin Owens, shout we've had. Yeah. Very good. And believe it or not, dub people from WWE will say yes. This isn't real life. <laughs> or rather, will be allowed to say yes. Very good to know. Apart from Kevin Owens, apparently. <gasps> is he not saying yes? Is he out? He he said no. How how very dare. This is the this 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 game so far. This booking process has been a real roller coaster. It breaks your heart. It's just like 
It does. I got super excited. Now my heart's broken. Oh man. Oh, Matt Martell and Chase Parker. Can would they say yes? Can we try to get them? Uh, we can. Yeah. Uh, give me a moment. For some reason, they're listed under free agents, which is weird because I did put them in WWE in the game. Uh oh. Oh yeah, there's. Some... Oh, nothing happened there. Oh yeah, that's bad. Like, <laughs> or maybe was I looking at the wrong bit? Oh no, they're here. Yep, they're right wrong. there. I saw I saw them on the screen as well. I mentioned them. Right. No deal. Matt said yes. <laughs> Matt said yes. Okay, that's fine. I mean, as far as Quebecois and the only other one I can think of is Sammy. Right. Uh, can we try him? Yeah. Sammy said yes. Okay, very good. But who who are we going to replace Chase Parker with? Like, who's going to be the sort of non-union equivalent for Matt Martell? Uh, for to well, team with Matt Martell. So I think Matt and Kevin could have done it. And that would have been all right. We do have Sammy in now, so we might as well make that a, a six man. So I don't know if you've been, if you caught up with the recent uh, shirt related news, where I think <laughs> Roman Reigns said in a promo that he would get the Ever Rise shirt taken off the the e shop <laughs> if he won, if he retained his title. <laughs> and then, so for some reason, which is always fascinating to me, like all like those ringside news and other news sites pick that up as like a news story, mm -hmm. which is fascinating to me. And I don't know what that happens. That comes up in my Facebook all the time as like. Oh, insider news. Uh, uh, I mean, Kevin Owens attacked backstage or something, but it's like, that's clearly a storyline. Yeah. I mean, that one clearly, that sounds to me clearly like maybe like an inside joke or a rib or something, you know? Uh, clearly. Yeah. Uh, could we get Roman and the Usos in there? We can, yeah, we can try. Uh, okay. Because if we could do Matt Martell, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn versus Roman and the Usos, I think that'd be a, a fantastic match. Right, Usos are in. Usos are in. Wonderful. Fantastic tag team. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, as far as getting WWE people on, so Jetstream Jack, who is the previous uh, guest booker we had on. His, okay. his main event was Keith Lee versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, yeah. So that's a fairly realistic matchup. Like, I feel like that could happen next week. Yeah. The, we, got, we got Roman. Uh, okay. The funny thing was, though, like, because in the, in this save, Keith Lee has left WWE with their title. Right. <laughs> and in the match, now, there, in the game, there's a thing called criticals, which is basically like a knockout win. Yeah, and they happen completely at random. Yeah, uh, every wrestler can do it with their finish, but yep. you also get wrestler like maybe, like for example, uh, Minoru Suzuki can do it with submissions, or mm -hmm. you can have people who can do it with strikes or suplexes or whatever else. So, uh, oh, I apologise, I hadn't got rid of the splash screen. Yeah, this is what I mean. You always forget to do things when you stream. Um, so Keith Lee critical Shinsuke Nakamura in like five minutes. Great. And if it happens very early, it, it does lead to like a poor in-game match rating. <laughs> Even though it's a thing um, that happens completely by chance. <laughs> I love the randomness of those games. Even in like the early SmackDown versus Raw, or just the early SmackDown games, oh, yeah. you could get random flash roll-ups. Yeah. Oh, I just got a Pro Wrestling Tea sale. Oh, nice. I'm thinking it might have something to do with this part, this uh, this stream. Ooh. So, if if you're there, thank you. Um, should I go just go through who everyone I would like to book and uh, yeah, we'll I, then make the card? Yeah, go for it. Mm. Okay, good. So, um, me and Mao, obviously. I don't know if you've got us already. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, so Veda, we have. Mm -hmm. We got Roman, the Usos. We, yeah, uh, Braun Strowman. Can we get Braun Strowman? Big mad Braun. We can. Okay. Very good. Um, 
We have Sexy Eddie. Mm -hmm. We have. Do we have Aja Kong? Uh, not yet, but let's have a look. I think we should get Aja Kong. Yep, she's there. Very good. But she said no. She said no. <gasps> but as far as other Joshi legends go, out there we've got uh, uh, Devil Masami, Dana Kansai, Minami Toyota, mm. uh, Chigusa Nagayo, Lina Sasuke. Can we get uh, Akira Hokuto? Akira Hokuto. Again, we certainly try. Beautiful. Can no. <laughs> no. Bull Nakano. Hope so. I love Bull Nakano. Apparently not. No. Uh, Linus Asuka? None of them are having any of it. Wow. What, what about Joshi legend Maki Ito? <laughs> sure, okay, why not? <laughs> Let's give it a shot. She's in. She said yes, okay. Um, can we try Manami Toyota? She said yes. Beautiful. Now, what does Owen Hart say? Owen Hart? He's got to be in I, there, right? I hope, yep. I hope he says yes, because I love Owen Hart. Yes. He said no. Damn he it. He said no. I actually... Okay, can we get his... Can we get Brett, then? Yeah. I'm showing my age here, but I have actually seen Owen wrestle live. <gasps> really? Where where, where, and when? Uh, twice, actually. Uh, both in 1994. Uh, wow. Both house shows in Gla uh, One in Glasgow, one in Aberdeen. Uh, the Glasgow one was shortly after WrestleMania 10 and it was a can rematch we get, can we get the sorry can we get the blue blazer oh before I forget you should be on this list somewhere if I because I know for a fact I've got like a, a separate blue blazer so ah there he is is nope. he interested no they're not interested <gasps> uh, yeah. wow can we get the wall then oh the wall brother <laughs> MMA legend the wall he said no. <laughs> Damn said you, no. Wall. Uh, wow. Yeah, Owen, the main event, the first one was Owen versus Brett. Yes. And the main event on the second one, which was shortly after SummerSlam 94, was, yes. uh, what do you call him? Uh, it was Brett and British Bulldog against Owen and the Anvil. Right. Hmm. Well, now, um... Can we get Kenny and the Young Bucks? Uh, shouldn't be a problem. Um, I think we've, I've used the mods to butter up AEW enough. Good. <laughs> I'm going to do it again just to err on the side of caution. While we're at it, can we get the uh, Uno and Stu of the Dark Order? Uh, I, I figured they'd be on your list. Yes. Good lads. I've never had the pleasure, but good lads. Very good lads. I'm surprised, actually. Have you asked? I think Uno. I did ask Uno, uh, and he never got back to me. Mm. Uh, although, obviously, you know, between AEW and his own stream and stuff, he's a very, very busy yes. man. So. <laughs> he does have a lot on his plate right now. So, like, I, I'm not. It's not one where I'm like taking offence to it or anything like that, you know. Right. Uh, both Uno and Stu are in. Very good. And you said uh, Kenny in the box. Yes. Milk in the chat is claiming that people are not working with you because they heard your sandwich opinions. I think my sandwich opinions are very, very fair <laughs> and objectively true, so... What sandwich opinions are these? It... it the only valid opinion about sandwiches so i'm gonna go I, I have to say this again i'm gonna say it often and that's okay but the lord of sandwich the great lord sandwich invented sandwiches so that he could eat his food while playing cards and not get his hands dirty so he put it in between two slices of bread and he ate it therefore a sandwich is anything that you can eat while playing cards and is in between two slices of bread does that make sense? Does that not sound like a logical definition to that, a sandwich? That does sound logical to me. I don't understand where there's any kind of argument. I, in fact, I remember you talking about this on Twitter now that you mentioned that. Because 
I remember saying in reply that this is like because I remember the divisiveness it caused, and I said it was kind of like somehow my, my friend Repelik. Somehow it's super divisive. Uh, my friend Repelik has claimed that uh, a pop tart is a ravioli. Yeah, that's just not true. A ravioli is pasta. Pasta is boiled. <laughs> I'm trying like, to get... I, I couldn't tell you. You could call it a, puck, a pocket. You could call it a dumpling. Hmm? Um. Do we get Minoru Suzuki? I don't have a match plan for it, Balfama. Yeah, let's get Minoru Suzuki. That's right. He's in. Do you say? Good. Beautiful. And that... Can we get Sexy Eddie and Aja Kong? Uh, sec sorry. Sexy Eddie. Hmm. I said already. Aja Kong we have. Can we get Danhausen? Oh, I hope so. I do love that Danhausen. Everyone loves that Danhausen. And his website. Oh, his website is a masterpiece. <laughs> oh, boy. And he's in. Is it not? Very good. Can we get uh, Damnation or Tetsuya Endo, Sasaki Daisuke, and Mad Polly? So. From DDT. So we got Tetsuya Endo. Uh, Daisuke. Who's the other one? Mad, Mad Polly, but it doesn't seem to be in there. Yeah, I mean, my I will admit my DDT roster does need a bit of updating. I've, quite a yep, few no. of the rosters are slightly out of date. Or That's okay. Let's stuff. go back to the Damnation then. And uh, we can get Takao Soma. I mean, Soma Takao. You, yeah, that's, you're fine. I mean, trying to keep up with stuff in wrestling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know what it's like because there's so much wrestling out there. Uh, yeah, I do try to keep up as best I can, but especially like the last year, I haven't been watching as much because, like, with uh, a lot of promotions are doing the stuff without crowds, and it's just to me, it's mm -hmm. not. It doesn't feel the same. Like I feel the exact same way about watching it. Yeah, it's not the same to me. But I mean, other promotions, though, we got DDT, we got Dragon Gate, Noah, uh, we got a small GCW one. Uh, Big Japan, Ice Ribbon, and Gato Move. Good. Um, we can go through my list here. Can we get Rosemary? She's on her roster anyway. Very good. Beautiful. Uh, she's a previous um, guest. Good. Yes. So we'll make sure to get her in there. Um, who else are we missing here? Oh, the New Day. Can we get the New Day? Oh, I hope so. See, this is what I mean, like, New Day still being a free piece in the game, so... Good. Which is the way it should be. Yes. They're all in. Good. Um... I think that does it for me, unless I'm missing... I don't think I'm missing anyone. Well, Maybe, can we get... One more. No, we have Manamito. Well, we're good to go. Okay. Let's get this boring stuff out of the way. Merch is important. Gotta get it. Oh, yeah. Alright, quick save. Let's book Sorry, us a show. Great Muda, too. I don't think we got Great Muda. You want Great Muda? <laughs> no, I do, I do not. I have no plans for him. Uh, right, so here we are. So you can book up to ten matches. Yeah, uh, and they're all either one on one, two on two, three on three, or four on four. There, you yep. will you will see a mixed option, but that's for that me basically in the game. That I don't know if it's a mistranslation or whatever, but that's like handicap matches. Gotcha. So I, I have nine matches on my list. So we're booking first from opener all the way down to main event, yes? Okay, we can do it that way, yeah. Beautiful, okay. So opener, let's do Sexy Eddie. Right, so. Versus? Aja Kong. She's, Aja Kong said no, remember? Oh, she said no? You got Man Manami Toyota, though. Oh, no. Oh wait, I know I have some extras. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. And I mean, we've got our own roster as well. Yes, please so, go from there. So shouldn't be too hard to. Uh, let's do sexy Eddie versus Shogi. 
Oh, I'd watch that. Right? That can't be. Yeah, that's gonna be fantastic. Oh my god, I, like that's actually really like possible, and I want to see that. Okay, uh, up next, let's do good old Dan Housen. Uh huh. Versus Rosemary. Because I'm sure this will be thoroughly disappointing because we can all imagine what that match would be like in real life. Mm -hmm. And I doubt they'll doubt we'll get to any of the great spots that they, they should on there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, up next, let's do a... Uh, yeah, let's do a six-man tag. And let's do the New Day versus Damnation. Oh! Gee... Uh, that's a match that I'm, I won't, I won't lie, had, had never entered my head, and now I would really like to see it. Mm. Right? So that's kind of what I'm going for here, matches you never thought about but would actually be great. One of the ones we booked once uh, was, uh, was like on the, for the original run of these, I would occasionally yes. do ones where I would just let the chat pick matches and stuff. And we did one that was Gene Money versus mm -hmm. Kazuchika Okada. Yeah. It went 90 minutes in-game. <laughs> <laughs> As it would. But Gene Money can and would, which is the best part. Yep. <laughs> Up next, let's do Yearn Simmons. Uh-huh. Oh, no, Yearn said no. Yearn said no, that's right. Aha. Uh -huh. Well then, let's, let's pick the Green Phantom and let's find him a different opponent. So, the Green Phantom. Yes. All right. So I mean, we look at our own roster. Uh, yes. Made up of previous Good. guests. There'll be a few names there you're familiar with. Yes. Uh, including the still to debut Brent Carter. So the story of Brent Carter. Brent is a real life friend of mine. Yes. And he's still a trainee. He was supposed to debut on a show in May, which obviously ended up never happening. So right. he, he's kind of, and because of the status of shows in Scotland, he's kind of, I guess, like stuck in limbo. Although mm -hmm. Andy Wilde's been keeping them right with their training and stuff, so that's good. Well, does he want to wrestle the Green Phantom? I imagine he would. <laughs> okay, he'll, let's he'll, do he'll, it. He'll take any booking he can get. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Brent. I hope the Green Phantom's actual finish is in the match, and I, I, I hope he in the game. Sorry, and I really hope he. What was his finish? It. it is a uh, half Nelson sort of wheelbarrow driver through the legs. You know Shane Strickland's finisher on? Sorry, <laughs> Isaiah Scott's finisher on NXT. Yes, uh, I, yeah, the, sort I, of that. I do that all the time as well. By the way, very good. <laughs> Force of habit's a strong okay. thing. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Up next, let's do uh, Kenny and the Bucks. So, another six person tag. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, like in case it comes up, the matches can be intergender. Yes. Like you said the other day on your stream, you know, if it's good enough for Minoru Suzuki, no one else has any excuse. <laughs> Yes, well, that's that's foreboding, but regardless, let's keep moving. <laughs> um, let's do uh, Kenny and the Bucks versus Meiko Satomura. Meiko. Maki. And Manami Toyota. Wonderful. Uh, what a match that promises to be. Right? Uh, these are all matches I would watch, so... <laughs> uh, up next, let's do Frankie the Mobster. Against Braun Strowman. There we go. Number one personal dream match. Okay, very good. Then let's do Matt Martell, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. So, Team Quebecois. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, Kevin Owens said no. Oh, did he say no? Yeah. 
Okay. We've got Sammy Matt Martel. Uh, we've got Dark Order. Yeah. Um, no, these are all booked up elsewhere. Sorry. Well, Jody. Jody, Jody the wrestler can get in there. Yeah. An honorary Quebecois for good, the night. Good for him. <laughs> Versus Roman and the Osos. I know Jody will get a kick out of that as well. <laughs> He's replacing Kevin. Then, okay. Uh, Semi finals. Okay. We got Veda Scott. This uh, singles? Yes. Versus uh, Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> The match that promises to be fantastic, and then uh, because of course I would, I've put myself in the main event, mm -hmm. and the Moonlight Express will be wrestling the Dark Order. Oh, I like it. Which is a like legit dream match, so might as well get it in there. I was actually watching a little of Uno streaming right before we started. Yeah. This stuff is always great. He's helped me set up my stream and figure out some Twitch stuff quite a bit. Uh, I've, I've been like trying to offer help that way as well to people. Like One of my friends is going to be starting streaming herself pretty soon. So obviously mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, hey, need any help? Let me know. Uh, for the regulars in the chat, that means, yes, uh, Porcelain Pumpkin will be streaming soon, herself. Uh, very well-liked uh, member of our community. Very good. We'll make sure to give her a follow. Uh, yeah. Our referee, as always, will be Big Hands Johnson. Okay. Good old BHJ. And uh, Sasha in the chat is popping for the Moonlight Express reunion. Yes. All right, I will quickly. Thank you for that. Do the game restart, just so yep. that we're. Oh, and so start the show, and then save. I get, I get that chainsaw. It's it was hard for me at first because, I mean, y you all know me. Like I'm not the most outgoing of people, like, but. I mean, I did it mainly just so that I could, you know, have a laugh with friends. And it's kind of built from there, so I think that's a good base to start out on. I think so too. I think, like, if you're doing it just to have fun, then it's easier mm. to get out of the way. Like, oh my god, I gotta, I have to do something. Like, there's, <laughs> there's an actual goal to this. Which is kind of how I started. I was like, okay, I want to stream. I want to get this going. I want to make this good. But as it was happening, I just decided, okay, I'm going to have fun with this. I enjoy this a lot more than I thought I would. So yeah, I keep doing it no matter what. Because I'm like nervy tight. So oh, thank you, all you pick for the uh, Twitch Prime subscription, which is the good one because that Wonderful. means you do it at no extra cost to yourself. restarting the game without the mods, just so it runs a bit better and it doesn't mess up all my theme file names. Great, I'm very excited for this card. A lot of very ex exciting matches. Yeah. You're essentially taking money out of Jeff Bezos's pocket and giving it to me when you do that. That's right. But there is another thing we've got going here today. So, as some of you know, there's like the links and stuff below my stream, uh, which include... Uh, a donation one. I have swapped it out today for a charity at the behest of, uh, that has been picked by Speedball, uh, is the Centre Multi-Ethnique de Quebec, uh, who I looked a, a little bit into them. They help immigrants uh, who are trying to settle in the Quebec area. Uh, what can you tell us about them, uh, Mike? Hmm. Um, I can't tell you much. <laughs> um, it was 
suggested in the chat yesterday, and I looked it up, and I think that's a very good cause and a very important thing. So any donation is much appreciated. Yeah. So like, for the duration of the stream, not that by all means, not that I don't appreciate subscriptions or anything like that, but maybe for the duration of the stream, if you want to like, you know, give something back or whatever, uh, maybe throw a few quid their way if you're able to instead. Uh, by no means is it obligatory because I know this, like right now, it's tough times for everybody. Uh, a lot of people are like out of work or down on their hours or uh, furloughed or whatever. But if you are able to and you're enjoying what we're doing, maybe you know, throw a few quid their way, or even like share the link around because not only do you not know who might be able to help them, but you don't know who they might be able to help. Uh, you know, especially someone like Milk who lives in the Quebec area and says right there themselves, worked with them in the past and the lady I worked with was genuinely the nicest person ever. So, yeah, that's another shout for them in being a good charity. And charities like that, again, during a pandemic when, like, at the best of times, charities like that need all the help they can get, but especially now more than ever. So, if you can help them, please do. Mm -hmm. But from that wee serious bit, we're going to go into a damn fun wrestling show. Let's do it. Uh, there's another uh, one from Milk. It says, in the current state of Quebec, this is one of the best charities you can work with. I mean, that is absolutely true. So the, our opening contest. Oh yes, screen. Of course, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I do this constantly. Ugh. Uh, like I'm, I'm a pretty scatterbrained individual, at the best of times. So, <laughs> like, what program are you using to stream this? Uh, OBS. Okay. Like, it's just like every now and then, like, because obviously I brought the splash screen back up for when I was restarting the game, and right. I forgot to take it back down again. <laughs> so it's so difficult to just like be mindful of. Like switching scenes and stuff mm -hmm. all the while, making sure, especially with my, my camera and my green screen and everything trying to hold up. It's a lot to think about. The one I always do when I'm doing my usual Fire Pro streams uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, which again is just a bunch of fun characters created by myself and a lot of friends in the chat. And the one I always forget to do is like I have an intro made for it. So I'll pop that up on like the part that I've got set for like the splash screen and the intro and stuff mm -hmm. and then I'll switch to the game and I'll do the match and then I sp switch back to the splash screen in between matches but I forget to, to deactivate the intro so it starts up again <laughs> right <laughs> anyway Sexy Eddie versus Shug D I would watch the hell out of this match and I hope all of you would too because we're about to do it right now so here's what, what I'm wondering. I don't know how uh, Fire Pro actually does with uh, comedy spots. Is uh, this a match that would, of course, be hilarious? Uh, some comedy... Like, there are some comedy spots in the default game. And yep. now that, obviously, the moves craft things out, like, people have been creating moves and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, doing a really good job with some of them. Oh, Big no. area, too. No they got the theme song? Thing. Wow. Oh yeah, I, 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 like, where possible I've tried to do everyone's themes. And the dancers and everything? It's very good. The boots are very, very accurate as well. Yeah. I mean, I didn't make that sexy Eddie. This, uh, whereas this shoe, someone else made it, but I updated the attire and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because whoever had made this one, it was like a very old school one. It was he was still in like the Chikara like globe trotters gear that he used to have. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm.
And I do love Shug. He's a lovely, lovely man. Mm -hmm. He's done some great work in Scotland. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been at Discovery quite a few times. Yeah. Uh, this is where I first met him. He was a big part of the Mundertaker story, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly. Well, it's funny because any time I've... storylines ever. Yeah, because any time I've brought up the Mundertaker stuff on one of these streams and the guest's like, what, well, that sounds weird, I want to see it. You're the first guest who's brought it up on Bidden. Wow, this guy's hands are gigantic. That's why he's Big Hands Johnson. His, <laughs> his hands are so muscly from all the counting he does. Right. So but, how long do these matches typically go? Uh, it can vary. Like, in-game, like, which is the in-game time is faster than real time. Yes. So in-game time... fly by. In-game it can... Like, I would say the average is maybe about 15 minutes. Okay. But Which it can is also differ. how it feels when you're actually wrestling. Like, obviously, stuff like, you know, a six-person tag might go longer because mm -hmm. people, like, breaking up pins and whatnot, but... Right. But yeah. So, yeah, Shug booked a tag team tournament when he was on. Oh, okay. He called it the, the Teddy Long Tag Team Invitational. Very good. And managed to get Teddy Long to call in during the stream. Wow. No way. And he gave it his official holla holla blessing. Wow. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. I won't get anyone cool to call in. <laughs> it just happened by chance. Because er uh, earlier in the day, he'd done an interview on a podcast. Yeah. And later in the uh, day, the guy was interviewing Teddy Long. And he passed Shug's number on to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it just came about that way. I might be able to get Frankie the Mobster to call in. <laughs> but I'm not sure. Spike Dragon donated 10 bucks. Thank you so much. That oh. is much appreciated. Excellent, Spike Dragon. Another Canadian there, by the way. <laughs> we have few... Whereabouts? Uh, I can't remember. An old Canadian. Sure he'll let us know. I have never been to Canada. It's very, very big, but most of it doesn't have anyone in it. Ah, Spick Dragons in Ontario. Man. Ontario, very good. Uh, a friend chat regular, who won't be here today, is unfortunately laid up with a migraine, but uh, our friend Jen is also yes. originally from Ant Ontario, now lives in England. Uh, Alrighty. From Fergus, I believe. So Sex City has been using a lot of drop toe holds. Mm -hmm. Wow, a one count. I, I haven't played much Fire Pro, but this gets me real interested. See, another drop toe hold by Sex City. I mean, they do have some comedy spots, like they've got the Dan Shoku Dino, like tight spile driver and stuff in the game. <laughs> Very good. Plus, like, our little community here has made some comedy spots. Uh, uh, Jim, who's in the chat, made a nipple twister submission. Good. Uh, which is... We, we, we gave to our uh, big star, Frillho. I'm sorry, who? Frillho. Uh, Frillho? Frillho, uh, named for the... How's that spelled? Uh, uh, T-H-R-I-L-L-H-O. Ah, Frillho, yes, 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 yes. Like the Simpsons gag. I'm familiar with the reference, yes. Uh, and... Like when Milhouse plays Bone Storm. Yes. Well, his finisher's called the Bone Storm. <laughs> As it should. And basically his gimmick in the game is, like, any time someone makes, like, a crazy, silly move in the game, we just give it to Frillho. Good. <laughs> does he have blue hair at least? Yes, he does. And it's blown Blonde. back as well. You didn't know that Frillho was a Simpsons reference, Spike Dragon. <laughs> I can't believe that. 
Millhouse wants to call himself Thrill House, but he doesn't have enough lettering, so he just ends up calling himself Thrill House. That's one thing we do love in the stream, old school Simpsons gags. That's good, because that's what I'm all about. In fact, I have to hold myself back from making as many Simpsons references as I would like to. Oh, I'm the same. <laughs> same, or wrestling ones, if I'm honest. Like, so, as a Scotsman, how do you feel about Groundskeeper Willie? I don't mind it. Like, okay. I, he's a bit of a stereotype, but right. it's it, it doesn't feel like mean spirited or anything. Right. Um. Like, he's popular over here. Like, big near fall. Wow. The, you know, the stuff like the lunch lady Doris. Have you got any grease? You know that kind of stuff. Oh, Grease me up, woman. I, oh, that I line is loved here. It's good to hear. Two point nine. Wow, many near falls. You got yeah. one each. And that'll bump your match rating up. Good. Well, I'm glad. I'm not surprised they're delivering. Both very consistent performers. Because the match ratings are, it's graded on the kind of stuff you'd expect, you know, like near right. falls, how back and forth it is, big moves, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Oh, should with the Aurora Borealis suplex. <laughs> At this time of year. May I see it? No. <laughs> that was a, I, I remember that being a Twitter I, interaction we had, because your idea was steamed hams but a wrestling match. <laughs> That's what? right. I didn't pull through on that. Couldn't figure out how to make it work logistically. I mean, again, it's something I would gift the hell out of. Yeah, I, I, again, I don't know how it would work. Do we just wrestle? Oh, there's the finish. With an Aurora Borealis. Very good. And then he does the Bass Root and Tongue. Okay. Um, I, so how do we do the Steam Hams but a wrestling match? Do we just have a wrestling match and then every now and again stop to say some of the lines from Steamed Ham? I don't know. Or unless it was like, kind of like, instead of, where did you get these burgers, it's like, where did you learn that move? Right. Because like, maybe the one person is just stealing a bunch of moves from someone. Like maybe, um, maybe it's yourself, but you're deliberately using all of like say, just for the sake of argument, the rocks moves. Right. <laughs> like, now, uh, now, see, in order to make this bit work as well as it could, I have to look up the words. They, and... they call it, like you're like, you call it a speedball elbow, despite the fact that it is obviously the people's. <laughs> So 87%. Yeah, I'm struggling, struggling to remember the words. Good solid opener. Very good. Happy with that. Next up, Danhausen versus Rosemary. And Rosemary, big, big friend of this stream. Uh, I'll be streaming with her tomorrow, actually, uh, as always, every Thursday. Myself, herself, hey. and our friend Rybuka hunting ghosts in Phasmophobia. She, uh, she's streaming right now. Yeah. I popped in to say hello before we came on. Danhausen. I love that Danhausen. Un unusually hairy? Oh no, it's a tattoo. Oh, okay. Ah, yes, now I see it. I think my quality was low for a second. See, when I'm watching it on the actual, like, Discord you're showing me. Ah, uh, yes. It's kind of blurry, but when I watch it on this Twitch stream, it's clear. Very good. What if I were to use a Canadian destroyer and disguise it as my own finisher? <laughs> Delightfully devilish speedball. Hey, yeah, good. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, tomorrow's so we Wednesday. Actually, like... I'm getting my days mixed up, so tomorrow it's actually Thursday I'm streaming with Rush. Oh, yeah, I, so someone else made this Rush, but I updated the attires and what have you. And uh, El Waster, uh, friend. Oh, chat regular um, made that uh, makeup face for her because I am terrible at the parts craft 
and you call it the Canadian Destroyer despite the fact you're obviously American. <laughs> Yeah, we can write this. I think we can do it. And I think if you were to wrestle anyone, I think we would have to coax Jayla Dark at a retirement for it. Because one, loves The Simpsons. Yes. Uh, two, uh, has said if they ever did come back to wrestling, they would never want to bump. And this sounds like it would be a mostly dialogue-heavy <laughs> match. Only dialogue and then a Canadian Destroyer. Uh, and she had nothing but nice things to say about you when I told her you were doing this, by the way. <laughs> That's very nice. I appreciate that. So who do you see winning this one? Well... Well, so I was gonna say Rosemary, but then here comes Danhausen with his patented flying head scissor. So I, I, I would say Danhausen's got this. He's got a new website, he probably wants to plug it in the post-fight interview, so... I think he's just hungrier. And meanwhile, Rosemary, she's half heart, like her heart is half into this. She's busy streaming at the moment. She doesn't even know she's wrestling. <laughs> I feel like luck isn't really on her side. Yeah, see, we booked Danhausen. That's why I haven't sworn yet. Do you normally swear? So I, well, I'm I, I got, I got this idea in my I head am that Scottish. you shouldn't or couldn't swear on Twitch. That is true. <laughs> Scots do love to swear. Uh, I mean, like, depends, like, I mean, you can, it's more like, o like, obvious stuff, you know, like slurs and whatever, you're not yes, allowed to Yes, of course. Uh, but swearing's fine. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I try not to, I haven't. I don't mind swearing in French, like, <laughs> Carlis Tabernac, it's, it's that, that's all fine with me. But, I don't know, swearing, swearing in English? It's probably just a wrestling thing where I've gotten so used to being mindful of not swearing. Yeah. Because that's surprisingly difficult when you're either either like selling very intensely or something actually hurts you for real to mm. not, you know, swear then, which is your like natural instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've all like you know stubbed our toe or whatever. Fiddle dee <laughs> This will require a tetanus shot. <laughs> I mean, if the rest of the stream just ends up Simpsons quotes, I'm going to be okay with it. Very good. I mean, this, this Scott swearing thing always reminds me, and we actually have a one of the chat commands for subscribers of this. There was a thing on TV a while ago. Uh, it was a, from a show called Mock the Week. Fucking! That's the one, Spike Dragon. <laughs> from a where comedians in a sort of almost uh, whose line is it anyway type round they yes. get given a subject and they have to talk about it mm -hmm. and this Scottish comedian called Fred McCauley got given etiquette and his thing was you know uh, you know as a Scot we get accused of using the F word a bit too much <laughs> and I, I think it's okay, I think it suits the the way we speak, the you know, the the pattern of our dialect and so forth. But I did see he says I did see the example of a Scot using the F word a bit too excessively. It happened at a football game and something happened on the pitch that a guy a few rows in front of me wasn't too happy with. He was trying he, to fuck on me! The guy stood up, pointed at the pitch, and he went, Fucking! Boo! Because sometimes just boo isn't enough. <laughs> right? <laughs> and because of that, like, the whole fucking boo thing has actually become, like, a, 
almost like a meme in Scotland at like wrestling wrestling shows or whatever. <laughs> like obviously not family friendly ones, but you know. I, I think it's fantastic regardless. Now again, I wouldn't say it, but I do hope that they are actually. Oh, we got we got something happening here. Yeah, I've, my only explanation for Danhausen being given that move by someone is that he's trying to suck the teeth out of her mouth. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Or is he trying to shove his own teeth down her mouth? Who knows with that housing? Yeah. Very evil. Very nice, but very evil. Now, does our match, ri match rating go way down if we if it ends in a count out? It can do, but not necessarily if it's been very good up until that point. Okay. 2.9, wow. As it is, just had a big kick out of an F5. I want, like, and I've done this in the game, but, like, I want someone to have an F5 finisher, and they call it, I sank your battleship. Ooh. Very good. Oh, also, so you know, it's a uh, Japanese rule, so it's 20 counts, not 10 counts. Right. I think that usually goes with the turnbuckles. Mm-hmm. Corner foot stomp, wow. Well, there is, like, other arenas in the game that are, like, that have, like, the American-style turnbuckle pads. Right. Uh, like, the arenas in the game are each supposed to be, like, different arenas. Yes. Like, this one's supposed to be uh, the Arena, arena Mexico. Mexico. This, yeah. uh, there's one that's supposed to be, like, the Tokyo Dome. There's one that's supposed to be Currican Hall. There's one I think is supposed to be like MSG or like right. basic like sort of WWE style arena anyway. Uh, there's an outdoor one. And there's like a big sort of garish WrestleMania style one. And I'm disappointed we're not in the Tokyo Dome one because that means Kenny's match will become instantly better. That's true. It's a plus 1.5 star modifier for being in the Tokyo Dome. Well, because I restarted the save, I don't think our company's big enough yet. Ah, uh, okay. Right. 20 minutes now. It... Okay, well now. Big old drop kick. Oh. These are long matches. Wouldn't expect the second match. There's another F5. Sank the battleship. <laughs> Which at least is a move that she did. 2.9! He kicked out of it twice. Wow. Now, is the F5 her actual finisher in impact? It used to be. I uh, keep meaning to update her moveset. It was called the Red Wedding. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. He kicks out of two F5s and then wins with a backbreaker, just a normal side backbreaker. Yeah, which would be fine if they had told some sort of backstory. Or, <laughs> you know, she at least teased the backbreaker a bunch, but she didn't. She just kind of hit it straight out of nowhere. Uh, well, 92%! No, the finish was awful. Can we manually lower the rating? <laughs> That's the most honest reaction to any of the <laughs> match ratings I've ever heard. So th this is the pro wrestling nerd in me getting really offended. Uh, I mean, to be fair with that second F5, uh, she was exhausted and it took her time to make it to the cover. That is true. Because that thing, that kind of thing does play in. Uh, but, I mean, 92%. Good rating. So I can't complain about that. But, but you will anyway, even though I you benefit yeah, from I it. I will. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the wrestling nerd in me cannot help it. Right. Well, bump the speed up slightly for this one, be simply because six-person tags tend to go a bit longer. Right, that's perfectly fine. We do sometimes do matches that are Benny Hill rules. Which is, yes. we play the Benny Hill music, we put the speed up to 400%. Very good. Can you escape through various doors and then come out the wrong door? 
I wish. I've only ever seen that once in a wrestling match, and it was at Discovery, funnily enough. Very good. It was, um... Ah, uh, her finish is the wing clipper now. Thank you, ever so British. It was a match between Looking Sharp and Joe Hendry. Yes. No, sorry, Looking Sharp and uh, Grado. And Joe Hendry distracted Grado and they ended up going on the big Scooby Doo chase in and out and of all the doors. Nice. And it ended like, because you know, the referee's counting the whole time. And they, you know, it gets to nine and Joe Hendry runs back in the main door. And uh, Grado runs in on like one of runs in on like uh, like one of the balcony doors mm -hmm. and looks and like sees how far he is for the ring and he's like oh no that sounds fantastic if i remember correctly that balcony the last uh discovery show i did someone was so excited about it that they almost fell off that balcony in one of I the remember greatest that. fan moments yes that was fantastic he did not fall thank god because he probably would have gotten hurt but still absolutely hilarious yeah, I mean it wasn't actually that balcony because it was a different venue it was right. I don't know if you ever wrestled at one of their shows in Portobello was, yes I did uh, yeah it was so at, I did one in, one in Portobello and one in that, that other one uh, it was it was at the Portobello venue this happened right which uh, sadly that's shut down now as well like there was they were renovating it for or they closed it down and they were going to be renovating it and then they ended up like not renovating it and then now it's just shut unfortunately right so these damnation uh are they, are they created by people or are they originally part of the game uh they are created by people because they are extremely well done oh yeah there's a lot of that in the fire pro community like the inventiveness that goes into right. making people look like who they should look like uh, so, Endo, who has half his head shaved and is now on the apron, the only thing that's unrealistic is he's not muscled enough in the game. Mm. Is that a <laughs> you see him wrestle in real life, baby? he is a shredded non That, because the haircut he has in the game is actually the Kushida haircut ah. that's in the game. Because Kushida is in the game. Right. There's like as because he was still with like New Japan when th their DLC for it came out. Yes. So was Kenny Omega. Uh, the only official characters in the game are basically New Japan, Stardom, and uh, uh, Yoshihiro Takeyama. Right. Which the money from his DLC went to the. Uh, charity that's set up to like help him and his yes. family mm -hmm. and that's it's very nice it's great as well because one of the moves that getting him adds into the game is like the fry takayama spot where they're just like punching each other in the face <laughs> <laughs> that legendary moment also it's, so thank you for the bits uh, clip... henry and kiwi by the way mm. thank you so that spot of Takayama and Fry punching each other in the face is insane. Like, I'm sure, like, 90% of the people that are on Facebook or YouTube or whatever have seen it once in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Like, without knowing who Takayama is. But it's like, it's, it's, that is probably one of the most popular MMA clips of all time. Mm -hmm. That and Benson Henderson. Stepping on the cage to high kick Anthony Pettis must be the two most played MMA clips of all time. See, one of my favourite ones, and you would think that it would be up there with them, but for whatever reason it's not, is the one where uh, uh, Genki Sudo did the giant swing into the heel hook. Yes. Yes, somehow it's not. I've seen that, but somehow it's not. Uh, we do love some Genki Sudo on this stream. <laughs> How could you not? Ah, so Ogie in the chat says they've uh, they had a speedball wrestle in uh, Kitchener, Ontario for PWA. That's right, I did. Was that when I wrestled Josh Alexander? 
Uh, I'll wait and see if that's it. I mean, always, the only times I've seen you live were your ones at Discovery. Right. Because unfortunately, money and stuff, I can't make it down to England for shows as often as I would like. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the one just I remember. I remember uh, those PWE sh PWA shows, sorry, were like Friday and Saturday, and I know one of them was in Kitchener. I guess it was that one. That was a very, very good match. I do like Josh Alexander. I was... Love him. I was kind of unfamiliar with him. I knew the name uh, before mm -hmm. he went to Impact, but really right. enjoyed watching him with, uh, with Ethan Page. They're great as a tag team. Uh, great Muda wants to know how long I've been at it wrestling. Uh, uh, I started... So I started taking bookings in wrestling. I don't want to say full-time, or I don't want to say professionally. But I started taking bookings in January 2006. And then for several years I wrestled once or twice a week. And then slowed down until it picked up. I, Good tag work here by damnation. No asking, did you ever work PWG? I did. I absolutely did. Between, uh, I think... 2015, for all of 2015 at least, and I think some of 2016, early 2016. And then afterwards, I could not go to the US anymore. Yeah. Very, so very unfortunate. Been, mm. Very unfortunate. Things have worked out all right since then, but that is unfortunate. Wrestled, ah, yeah, Tommy End. Now, obviously, Alistair Black. I absolutely did, as part of uh, Peter Luigi Bola. And one of the most physically difficult things I've ever done, which is three very long matches that day in that brutally hot building filled with small area in the summer in LA filled with several hundred people I, I mean obviously I've never been but I've heard that building is impossibly hot yes also thank you Fred the Time Bomb for the follow very much appreciate it oh, Fred Fred is also a kid I also thought earlier, like, one of, like, you are part of the list of wrestlers I've inadvertently made a fool of myself in front of, or came away feeling like I had, rather. Oh, how so? So, I mean, we met briefly when you accompanied Veda to the Fierce Females booking. Right. Uh, like, and, uh, if, I, if I remember right, you were... Uh, just like sort of manning her bit at the merch table yes and I actually bumped into you after the show as well which I don't know if you will remember that but uh, you I'm assuming you and Vader were going to your hotel or something like you had like your bags and stuff with you and myself and my partner were walking by you because we were going to the bus station to get the bus back to Edinburgh and uh, I saw you and I was like oh hey you gotta stop me like this and I don't know if it was just you were tired or whatever you didn't say anything and I felt like a fool <laughs> oh so okay or either that or I you didn't remember me or whatever but whatever mm. I wonder if I can pull up any context here but yes that does sound familiar yeah. Um, I mean, it was probably because I did not remember you. Ah. And also, uh, so like, the reason I was there is probably just because, well, mostly because I wanted to watch the show and help yeah, yeah. out with everything. But also because we have an incredibly difficult traveling schedule, mm. and we were not like I remember this for sure. We were definitely not on our way back to their hotel. We were on our way back to where we were staying at the time, which was either Wolverhampton or Coventry. Right. But I, uh, 
I don't know where we were. Maybe we were coming from a Riptide show before this or something. Oh, this it but, was after the Fierce Females show. Yes, but I mean, I mean the day before. Oh, right, right, right. Probably, okay. Like somewhere around London, and then we took a bus to Glasgow for the Fierce Females show, and then we were rushing to catch our bus mm. back to Coventry immediately after the show. Yeah. So if if you'll catch me a lot of times. I'm I'm really oh, sorry. Oh no, I, was I, I wasn't you. offended or anything like that. Like, no, uh, no, I, 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 I figured like, I was probably just you know, tired or whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> I was completely exhausted. Um, it would be my best guess. Is like me putting my foot in it or whatever is like it's a common thing. Like, yeah. and not like in a bad way. Like, just more social awkwardness, I guess. Uh, it's absolutely not a problem, though. <laughs> These things happen. Yeah. Is that... I always come away oh, from things go. thinking, oh, they're going to think I'm an idiot, or this or that or the other. Like... So, win for damnation. Okay, very good. Win over New Day, that means something. Who brought the chair into the ring? I missed that. I missed that as well. Okay, 84%. We're doing all right. Yeah, solid result. Yeah. Very satisfied with this match. Is there a speedball in Fire Pro? Yes, there is, Ogie. I'll be up in a few matches. And next, our boy Brent Carter gets to debut again. Brent, is Brent on Twitter? Uh, Brent is on Twitter. Brent Carter uh, FCH. Brent very, FCH. Very, very, very nice man. I will give him a follow. Brent, sorry, one more time. Brent FCH. Brent Carter FCH. I'll just. I'm going ah, to bring it up myself. Right. Yeah, Brent Carter FCH. Okay, uh, a real, real life friend of mine and a, a very good person. Oh, he gets a follow. I wonder if I've met him. Uh, possibly. He works ring crew at Discovery. Right. Thank you, uh, join mate, for the follow. Uh, <laughs> Damnation Brothers. So the Damnation Brothers being criminal is referring to that time I, I did a promo on Google Translate with DDT. I remember that. <laughs> and I unknowingly called them criminals. Yeah, I've had that same problem with the uh, Translate things. Uh, being that I, you know, I work in a shop. We get a lot yep. of customers, you know, who are like tourists or, uh, you know, recently moved to uh, Scotland or whatever. Yes. I was speaking one time to this uh, customer, she, uh, I believe she was Korean, uh, she mm -hmm. had the Translate app on her phone and was trying to ask me a question and you know, she, she showed me the question she was trying to have answered, came up fine, uh, I tried to answer her, uh, you know, politely, and, oh yeah, the thing you're looking for, it's right over here, blah 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 blah, and it ended up like, me, uh, like, uh, I can't remember, but it was some kind of insult <laughs> that the, oh, no. the, because voice recognition stuff doesn't work well with Scottish accents. Right. It uh, is not programmed here. Yeah. And, you know, like, I mean, she looked at it and she laughed because she knows, she knew that, oh, okay, that's not obviously not what he said. You know, and she looked at me and showed me it and kind of laughed and I was like, yeah, no, 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 that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, we, no. we talked about this the other day, but was like, I wish I could speak uh, another language because at least when I was younger, like Scottish schools were not very good at like teaching second languages. Right. Uh, like when I was at school, at like a high school, which in Scotland starts when you're like 11 or 12. Yes. Uh, before then, no second language stuff at all. 
Sorry, I'm just gonna interrupt you real quick to tell you how happy it makes me to see how well done this green phantom is. <laughs> it is pretty good, good like. Mm -hmm. So like I said, like the Fire Pro community are pretty ingenious at getting stuff to come out good. Yes. Um, languages are hard. Yes, they are. So speaking <laughs> speaking one well is difficult. Mm. Learning is second. I mean, like uh, one of my close friends here is actually like she's originally from Krakow in Poland and her job is she's an interpreter like a Polish to English interpreter mm -hmm. like freelance so she does she's gets brought in you know for things like you know like court cases and that kind of thing and you know it's tough and it changes your accent as well weirdly mm. like the amount of times like she'll be on a call to her family and they're like oh you don't sound Polish anymore <laughs> even though, even though to me, like, she has a Polish accent, you know? That's very funny. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, I'm currently trying to learn Japanese, or at least I've been trying to learn Japanese for several years, and I do, you know, uh, daily lessons and stuff. Ooh. And there's a lot of, like, things in Japanese that are said in the everyday conversation and said very often that don't really have an equivalent in English mm -hmm. and just that like a lot of them are like very polite and they're just normally included in the language and like they mean something that isn't available and I think that's interesting yeah going along with the idea that like learning a new language changes the way you think if like certain language just with the way they're structured put emphasis on certain things Mm -hmm. And I think that's always incredibly interesting. Oh yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to learn a second language, uh, but obviously it's one of those things like once you know, you're in like maybe like your twenties or thirties, and your brain has stopped growing as much, it becomes a lot harder. So definitely, like when you're a kid, it's so much easier, and which is why, like I think I, I, I. At least here we learn English and French and so mostly through school and just like being mostly immersed in it because everything here is pretty much bilingual. I learned English relatively easily and then became uh, as close to fluent as I am now. Mm -hmm. But it's much easier when you're younger. But I, I'm a big fan of the Duolingo app and I said it yesterday but I'm saying it again today. I think Everyone spends, you know, however long, probably if you add it up, an hour of your day just scrolling through your phone. Mm. You can just switch 15 minutes of that and work on learning a new language. And even if you don't learn it fluently or you're only learning parts of it, that's still like 15 minutes very well spent. Like, it was German I t did at school. And yeah. th the thing is, because I've never actually been to Germany, so I've never had to use it. So, right. uh, like, and your brain kind of makes way for new things. And weirdly, the, the part I remember most is numbers. Ger yeah. German numbers I'm fine with. Or, like, polite greetings or whatever. But beyond that... Mm. I Well, I strongly recommend you just install Duolingo and start doing some, uh, some German lessons on it. Take, like, five minutes a day. Hmm. Either that or, like, maybe even, like, Spanish or something. Yeah, or like even like Polish or Chinese because those as far as like people from other countries go those are the customers I tend to get the most right uh, so learning so, some basic phrases might be helpful yeah because I mean we do have like one Polish employee uh, so obviously she can switch to, uh, between two languages as and when she needs to to help them but I would like to be able to help them too. Just so I think whatever you hear or would use the most would be the best to learn. Because mm. my experience from learning Japanese is through Duolingo and apps and studying and whatnot. I, I like I learn and hear words, but I, I'll forget them. Mm. But then, especially this happened a lot more when I you know spent more time in Japan before the pandemic. The words that I would learn on the app and then like either hear people say often or had to use like that fit well into the making of a pro wrestling match which is the thing i did the most in japanese 
Oh, is that the Green Phantom's finisher? 2.9? Oh, it was Very similar close. to what you said it was. Right. I think the closest like a, thing that's in the game to it. Mm. It was more like a made in Japan. But yeah. Pretty close. Um, regardless, so when you like, it's a two part process I find when you study and learn the words and then hear it and use it, and that's what gets you to memorize it. Mm. Which is why it's easy to learn French or English if you live in Quebec, because you're going to hear both. So if you're trying to learn one or the other, at least you're going to get to use it. I mean, then again, you know, I'm, I'm Scottish. Like, what I speak is barely English, so... <laughs> I love the Scottish language. Oh, oh no, uh, British. The Made in Japan is in the game. Uh, it's not a created move. Right. Or at least it got added when with the New Japan DLC uh, for Shingo. But I think Green Phantom uh, finishes it on his knees. Right. Which makes it different from the usual seated made in Japan like Shingo does. Oh no, low blow! <laughs> Another backbreaker, that could be a finish again. Imagine if it was. I would be really, really angry if we had two matches ended, ending after... Oh, good. Okay. I was really scared there. That had me going. Oh, the st oh, he means the Storm Cradle Driver. Someone has made it, apparently. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's very close to what Queen Phantom does. If not the same, I don't know if the hooks are different. Oh, no. That's rude. Oh, they're going outside now. Does that bring their rating up? Um, it can do. Uh, depend. It can. There's a lot of it. Also depends on their style. Oh, there's chair. A chair. Okay. Like two dives happen in this game. They do. There's a cradle power driver right on the chair. If that's not the, whoa, not even two point nine. He kicked out of two. Wow. Going into business for himself. <laughs> the John Cena song. <laughs> uh, Ogie asked, uh, how would you have rated your match with Josh? It was one of the best I had seen in indie wrestling and I have seen a lot. Uh, I don't know how I would rate it. Are you asking me with stars? Uh, four and three eighths. I, I don't know <laughs> if you meant like stars, but like just in general. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's... Uh... I really don't know how to rate my matches. That's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, very good. I mean, definitely present presentable. It like it's gotten quite old, and I at least I am successful in my quest to get better as a wrestler. So, like, I look at these matches, and for the time, it was great. I feel like I could do better now, and I mean, I have with Josh, so that's helpful. But. I mean, I was mistaken, by the way. I have seen you out with Discovery. Uh, I saw you in WCPW as well once. Yes, that's right. Uh, and obviously, Discovery, there was uh, yourself and Veda versus BT Gun and Casey Owens. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, ended early as Casey got hurt. And, yes. And... Uh, the singles match with BT Gun, which was very good. Yes. That's on YouTube, so... Oh! Brent Carter picks up the win over the Green Phantom. Yeah. Well y done, Brent. Yeah, another successful debut for him. <laughs> another successful debut. Um, yeah, the match with BT Gun is on YouTube, and that one was a lot of fun. So you can go and find that. Milk says, the first time I saw Speedball, he stole my seat and brain buster the dude on it, and I had to stand. Well, where was this? Well, it's Milk Man, so I'm guessing somewhere in Quebec. It was, yes, it was definitely NSPW. Was it BT Fun? No, it was BT Gun. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I was Dojo. Ah. Hmm. 
Black Dynamite, yes. Okay, yes, thank you. Black Dynamite, by the way, fantastic. Super underrated. That was a great match. He and I had, I think, two at the Adidas Dojo, both great. There we go, Omega and the Bucks. And that's actual official Kenny Omega. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bucks as well, or no? Or uh, but no, but someone made faces for them. Okay. Right. You do look pretty close. Oh yeah, some people have made like a really good job at doing that kind of stuff. The same with like the Mako Satamura is a face someone made as well. So uh, the fact that that's not a. Uh... An original Satomura is amazing because it's very well done. Mm. Manami Toyota, not so much. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, the Manami Toyota, I believe, is based just based on like how they had her looking in the old Fire Pro games. Right. And I've just not got around to updating it yet. <laughs> Makito, the outfit looks somewhat accurate, but. She, she's been hitting the gym or something. <laughs> it's game, difficult to make looked, people too small. <laughs> Give up. Yeah, that's it, Muta. It's the, the Manami Toyota head for the old game, yeah. So who do you see winning this one? Because I'm going to be honest, I can't see past Meiko Satomura. And Manami Toyota. It's very hard. I feel like Kenny and the Bucks are pretty well established as a team and they're going to work well together. However, Manami Toyota, Satomura, and Ito are all absolute legends. So it's really, really a tough call. Seen a lot of quick tags already. Mm. No worries, all you picked. Thank you for very much for coming out. Mm. Very and again, thank you for the uh, the prime subscription. Very much appreciate it. And slapping Manami Toyota in the face is not something I believe is well advised. No, absolutely not. I will be right back in a second. No problem. Uh, how's everyone in the chat doing? You all doing well? Oh yeah, th this is what the guest booking ones are like, Kiwi. We just, you know, we let the guest pick the matches and, and the charity on the link below. And we just kind of chat wrestling and have a laugh while the matches run. We're going to be doing one of these with Big Calix at some point as well. Uh, always, he's got like real life stuff, like moving house and stuff to get dealt with first, but that'll be happening probably in about a month or so. We've also got like most of the, uh, the previous ones up on YouTube. Uh, which has, you know, many people like, you know, uh, Viper, aka Piper Niven, Rosemary, Andrew Everett, uh, Ray Jackson, Sugar Dunkerton, lots of good people. You can watch them all on YouTube. As you can tell, probably tell, I'm pretty awkward at promoting myself. Promoting other people is fine. Promoting myself, not so much. Kawada, yeah, that that bro. Uh, welcome back. Did I miss anything good? Uh, I, I took the opportunity to ask the chat how they were doing, and 
uh, did a quick plug for uh, the YouTube page where you can watch all the other older uh, guest booking streams that are archived there. There it is, someone just put, put it up in the chat. That is my boy Chainsaw, uh, who has been invaluable help through all this streaming stuff. So a YouTube channel is something I need to be working on? Uh, I've got loads of things that I, I know I need to get get going to help with my, my Twitch streaming. Uh, like a uh, Discord server that I'm still working on setting up. <laughs> I need to just figure out how Discord works first. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can help things. you with that. Mm. That would be appreciated. That's something that... Uh, oh! Manami Toyota's Rolling Cradle signature move. Just a one count off it. That's unfortunate. But yeah, uh, people have uh, recommended to me and told me that they would like me to make a Discord server, so I'd be more than happy to. Yeah. It's basically like a little chat room that yeah. like, you have the complete run of. Like you, you would obviously like, uh, like what you say goes kind of thing. Right. Oh. Oh, there we go. Wow. Abrupt, abrupt end to this. Sort of broke down and then with four people in the ring there's the finish five people in the ring oh oh there's even morgan we've got a question for you in the chat uh as a fellow shrek enthusiast may i ask what is your favorite song from the shrek series well i mean there's only one right answer to that it's uh all star by smash mouth what else could it be so didn't go that long comparatively this one so a bit of a lower rating but it is a nice rating a very, very nice rating so you can't we can't complain too much about that mm. oh and spike dragon says they just watched the match where you were shrek bailey that's right that's on youtube as well uh, I've been well, Space King Bobby. How's your good self? We are booking a Fire Pro Show with Speedball Mike Bailey. Hello. He is, right now is the match he has booked. Frankie the Mobster versus Braun Strowman. Frankie the Mobster with his old, old pants. He now wrestles as the Beast King FTM, or at least when he does get to wrestle, which hasn't been in a long time. Yeah, this is how outdated I am with some of them. I haven't even shaved his head yet. He is a, a large man who just hurls people all around. Do you think you could flip an ambulance? I mean, I haven't tried. Um, how much practice do I get? As much as you need. I think I could eventually. Do I, like, is this within a time frame? Do I have like a month to flip the ambulance? Uh, I mean, I mean this doesn't sound confident that you could do it as quick as Braun did. No, I, well, so you don't know that maybe he'd been practicing for several years i mean he is a former strong man well, that's true exactly he had years of practice to flip an ambulance now with that being said if i had a couple years to put on as much weight as possible and train for strong man and then try to flip an ambulance maybe i could i'm not a tall man i'm not a like genetically very big Maybe if you had know. some kind of like wedge and fulcrum going, like you could like tip it up. So I think I certainly could that way. Now the the equipment question is a big one. I like certainly I don't get like a, a jack or a, a forklift or anything. But do I get like do I get to wear straps on my hands? Now what about sleeves? Oh, I mean, uh, dealer's choice. You can wear what you want. Uh, let's see here an ambulance let me google how much force is required to 
<laughs> so my deadlift PR is just a little bit over 400 pounds, 405 maybe. Maybe it's a leverage thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking with maybe like a wedge and like get right. something in there to like lever it. How much force to flip a car? Hmm. Now that actually ambulance might be easier because it's a lot taller. Just like SUVs are more likely to tip over. Oh, first near fall for Frankie. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, here's another one. Like, since we were talking about you're a fan of The Simpsons. Yes. Who, who is your favorite one off Simpsons character and why is it Hank one Scorpio? It, it's a good question. The one liners and also. Uh, who is the voice of Hank Scorpio? Uh, Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks, yes, of course. So, of course, it's going to be good. Also voiced uh, Jacques, the French puller. Yes. Probably the worst one-off character in The Simpsons. I don't know. Like, I've got like the season one DVD, and mm -hmm. one of the extras on it is a bunch of outtakes of him just like, like ad libbing, and yes. Marge having to react to it, and it's hilarious. <laughs> And apparently out there somewhere, not on one of the DVDs, but apparently there exists about an hour and a half of unused Hank Scorpio lines. And I I want more than anything to hear it. Uh, in all seriousness though, my favourite one-off character in The Simpsons would be Ray Patterson, the Sanitary Commissioner. Oh, of course. Just for that one bit where he gets played in and goes... I don't remember the exact lines, but he gets played in and goes, ah, you've all screwed yourself, goodbye, and then gets played out. <laughs> One of my favorite bits ever, and I refer to it, which is something that I think uh, stand-up comedian, American stand-up comedian Red Fox actually did mm -hmm. a very long time ago. Uh, I love the, uh, the bit at the start, you'll hear, leave the bird alone, never, and <laughs> start shaking the cage. <laughs> Cage is also that episode one of the greatest songs in Simpsons history oh yeah the garbage man can but he sure can that's the thing like, speaking of the Simpsons and like mentioning Hank Scorpio when you were in Scotland did you meet Jayla Dark's husband because he looks like a real life Hank Scorpio <laughs> I don't believe I did he, I would have he noticed. Would, he would have been at Fierce Females because he did camera work for them. But he legitimately looks like real life Hank Scorpio. Maybe we just weren't introduced. Does he also carry sugar in his pocket? It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that's a good finish. Good clean <laughs> power slam. 86%. All right. Very happy with that. So, yeah, apart from that one match, scoring very solidly here. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, that's a good detail, uh, Chainsaw, with the Red Fox reference, the fact that he gets played onto the Sanford and Son theme. Yes. Mm hmm So yeah, The Garbage Man, probably up there with the best songs. The best one is definitely See My Vest. Oh, of course. I don't think there's any argument to that. Uh, I'm, I'm, not then, I'm, go I'm not going to argue that one, definitely not. Right. And then Apu's song, when he moves into The Simpsons, and mm. he lies to them through song. I hate when people do that. <laughs> really? <laughs> There's uh, Team Quebec filling in for Kevin Owens, Jody the wrestler. Very good. Going up against the Usos and Roman Reigns. Look at these topless men. Right? The updated Roman's outfit. Yeah. 
Well, I did. And which okay, was good. literally just a case of take his top off, but. I think, like, based solely on a, another Simpsons reference, I am going to be making a luchador in this game called Space Coyote. Space Coyote is very good. Which will join Frillho in my league of Simpsons references made wrestlers. Another, really, one of the best episodes just by that whole uh, Peruvian I don't know what it's called the, ghost pepper? Yes and Oh, I gotta look up what that pepper is called He turns up with like the, like the like just filled his mouth with wax so he can eat it <laughs> Yes, he just swallows it whole and then, but that whole like hallucination sequence is uh really one of the best. I've not watched that episode in a long time and I feel I need to change that. Six, seven, eight, nine. Like obviously the, the the best ones you're talking like the one where Homer goes to college. Mm hmm Which is just Yes. It's just wall of all amazing jokes. Uh the one where he starts the vigilante gang. Yes. My number one Simpsons episode is Bart's Comet. I've not seen that one in a, quite a while. So that one is very good because I love how just like it takes being reminded of their mortality for them to get along. Mm. And then as, as soon as the threat is lifted, they're just back to their selfish selves. <laughs> Uh, Merciless Pepper of Quetzal... <clears throat> Quetzalacatenango. Okay, very good. Also, I was thinking about the lemon tree one the other day. Yes! Oh, God. Yeah. Shake hard, boy! Oh, as well as Lisa Goes Gaga. Hmm. Definitely ranked up there as one of the best episodes. No, that's not true. Everyone hates it. It's <laughs> the one with Lady Gaga. Oh, I was. I thought you were meaning like Lisa gets angry. I thought you were talking about the one where she turns vegetarian. No, but that one's very good. Uh, the monorail one, of course, Chainsaw. Monorail, uh, another great song. <laughs> By the way, Chainsaw, do you, like, you know that intro bit that gets played on Forgotten VCR? Is that Phil Hartman? The Forgotten VCR being something that comes up nearly every damn stream because we love it so much. <laughs> You'd maybe like it, actually. What is it? It's a channel on here. Uh, run by a guy who collects and does restoration work on like VHS tapes. Aha! Uh -huh. And he plays like it's like mixtapes of like weird and funny clips he finds in them. Okay. And it's all like stuff from like commercials and like mostly like old school like eighties and seventies ninja movies. Yes. And yes, that does sound like I would like. It also sounds like the plot to a horror movie, but a little bit, yeah. But it's a lot of fun, and it's like every I think Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And it sounds great uh, until he finds a video that shows his own death. Oh no! There's even wrestling in it sometimes, back. actually. Great. Usually, like sort of like late 80s, early 90s, old Japan kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like, sort of like match highlights and uh, bits of promos and stuff that show up in it. 
tapes. Once upon a time, that was the only way to get wrestling that was on TV. Oh, totally. I mean, I, I mean, I'm old enough to remember, like, when I first got into wrestling, uh, over here at least, uh, all you had was like WWF and WCW tapes. And then, like, my cousin got in touch with a tape trader and managed to get like right. ECW, New Japan, All Japan, uh, stuff like that. So, I, like, yeah. There was some file sharing when I was a bit, like, when I had been watching wrestling for a little bit, that so you could find wrestling that way, but you also had, like, a 50-50 chance of getting a, a virus that just obliterated your computer. Mm. <laughs> because you're downloading any video on LimeWire. Um, but I do remember when I was a young teenager, I found a, well, I think my sister, who was a wrestling fan as well, was gifted a box of Manami, Manami Toyota tapes. Oh, nice. And yeah, absolutely loving those. See, like, those tapes that my cousin got, were they were like my intro to like Shinya Hashimoto and uh, a lot of people like that. Like, yeah. people like Liger and Muta had already seen through uh, the WCW tapes. Mm -hmm. But like uh, like uh, Kensuke Sasaki as well. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, uh, Taxi Gwen, for the raid. Welcome. We're booking some Fire Pro and talking wrestling with Speedball Mike Bailey. Thank you, Taxi Gwen. A penguin in a taxi. If that was a cartoon, I would watch it. Right now we have uh, like Chase Parker, um, Matt Martell, and uh, sorry, Chase Parker, Sami Zayn, and ordinary Canadian Jody the Wrestler getting the win over the Usos and Roman Reigns. Very good. Okay, a surprising uh, 20, 20 minutes too. 84%, wow. Uh, next up, this, well, because, see, Minoru Suzuki is a damn monster in this game. Also, thank you, Taxi Gwen, for the follow. Very much appreciate it. Jody, the French Canadian. So, I mean, all I have to say, uh, Veda, on this one is good luck. Because it's Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> right, well, let's see. I think her chances are pretty good. Oh, I need to fix her theme. This is one of the things that happens sometimes with the mods. Like if you use someone in a match and then do. Right. Uh, then go back to not mods. Anyone you used in that time, it messes up their theme. Right, right, right. And there's, sometimes I forget to fix some people's. Mm -hmm. Oh, playing uh, Taxi Gwen was playing Dead by Daylight with Killer Kelly. Uh, Killer Kelly, who has also been a previous uh, guest booker on the stream, did very, very well. Great. What did she book? Uh, it was a mix of people like Minoru Suzuki and like people mm -hmm. from WXW and uh, the UK scene. One, did she book Yarn? Is my question. She did. Oh no, this, this is not starting off well for Veda, at all. So, uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, poor Killer Kelly's show was cursed. Oh no! How she, come? She booked six matches. Yeah. The first three all scored a hundred percent. Wow. The last three all ended early via critical. Which I'm terrified for Veda is going to happen here. Because Suzuki seems to get them a lot. I think mainly because he's Minoru Suzuki. She seems to be doing alright so far. Yeah, she's she... getting the eyes, big clubs. She's really manhandling Minoru Suzuki. Oh. 
behind. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm on the edge of my seat here, by the way. Very invested in this. Oh, of course. Mm. Okay, just a one count. That's a very good sign. Oh, you should hear Andrew Everett commentating his own matches. <laughs> I can imagine. Mixed in with... Ow! Oh, oh, stop doing that! <laughs> I mean... Andrew Everett doesn't stream, does he? Uh, he does. He does? Oh, wow. He does. So, funny thing, how earlier we were talking about, like, the like the sort of copyright free people in the old WCW games. Yes. Uh, like Brukowski, uh, the, uh, uh, all the people that were like supposed to be like Japanese wrestlers, but obviously they didn't have the rights for them. Right. Uh, so he has made them all in Fire Pro and made a promotion out of them. And, okay. Uh, but like giving them a bit more depth and like if something dumb happens during one of the matches, they'll just roll with it and turn it into a storyline or whatever. Uh, yes. And it's hosted by himself, uh, Courtney Rush, and Dino Winwood. Sounds fantastic. It's, oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. And they do that on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Andrew Everett, who at one point was the top booker on our leaderboard, by the way. Wow. And then got dethroned. The off? Uh, uh, I remember, I'm trying to remember who, who he booked. He obviously he booked himself and Rush and all that. I remember, I can't remember against who, but I know he booked uh, Kent Omihara. Okay. Who he claims is one of the nicest men in wrestling. <laughs> that sounds about right. The, I mean, the top booker of all time was, believe it or not, Faye Jackson. Really? Yep. Oh, Suzuki gets the win. Oh no! I told you he's a monster in this. That quickly! Wow! Oh no! Suzuki does not mess around in this game. I'm gonna have to tell him now. You see what you have done, what you have wrought. <laughs> 68 percent oh no i think like that and the other one that was in the 60s might have hurt you a bit on this i think so too we're doing all right beforehand i mean like you're still at an average of 82 which i mean if i ran a show and got told oh you scored an average 82 percent i'd be happy with it i've got really high hopes for this next one though yeah main event if it gets any less than 100 i'll be offended Moonlight Express versus the Dark Order. Evil Uno, not to be confused with Large Uno, of course. Or uh, Kaol Uno. You should be familiar with if you're familiar with Genki Sudo. Oh yeah, I can't really know. I remember him. He was in, I believe it was the, and I remember, he was in the Pride fighting game, I think, that was out on the PS2. Yeah. No, oh, we've got an actual theme song. Oh yeah. No expense spared. Although I feel like a fool because I forgot to set your entrance so you come out in the gi. No, that's alright. I normally don't uh, with my Moonlight Express gear. Wow. Mao's starting off strong here. Just straight up slamming Uno out of the ring. Early too. Okay, it's going very well. Although, a word of warning, someone, and I have applied them, someone did make a bunch of, like, Dark Order slash Smash Brother tag moves. Okay. And did a fine job of them as well. Is our, uh, 
is the Moonlight Express double moon salt in there to the outside? Uh, not as far as I'm aware. Oh, that's disappointing. Although someone has made the ultimate weapon. Oh, okay. That would be that would be fun. This is hard to watch, to be honest. Uh, you, you're worried for yourself. Yeah. Okay, there we go. My jaw is unusually chiseled in this. Stu is just countering me left and right. All right. That's Stu Grayson for you. Very fine yes. wrestler. He's done a lot of fireman carries so far. There we uh, go. It, because the way it's set when like you make someone is you've got like sort of weak grapples, medium grapples, and large ones, mm -hmm. and you like it is set so that they'll do a lot of the weak grapple ones early in the match, and then sort of like build up to bigger moves. Right. But you can edit it like to your heart's content. You can set it set things so like say like they always go for the pin after this move or they always try to follow this move with that move and stuff like that right uh oh oh okay that's an interesting move I believe they call it Indiana Jones and the Stunner of Doom ah, or they did back in their it? Smash Brothers days anyway <laughs> so they have not done that move in a very long time I don't believe Because in the default game, there's actually not that many tag moves, sadly. So, like, when someone started making tag moves and put up a bunch of their ones, I was like, oh, I'll be having them. There we go. I did some sort of standing flippy there. Yeah. I'm not sure what it was exactly, but... It was like the standing corkscrew. Yeah. Uh, Chainsaw, someone did make the fatality for them. Well, I hope this doesn't end by count out. It's a brain but uh, Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Very close here. Wow. Uh-oh. So did you ever, like, did you and Mao ever get to wrestle against the Dark Order or Smash Brothers? No, we did not. So this is a dream match. So this absolutely is very, very high on the list. Um, so uh, the only time Mao did a lot of wrestling, he did that one show for Evolve, or two shows rather, uh, around WrestleMania weekend last last year, or the year before that, I guess. Uh, unless you discount the last year. Because yeah, I was going to say, really time happened. doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, he did the... He was in America for that time, and then we were in England for a couple months in the end of 2019. And I don't think the Super... The, the, sorry, the Dark Order were uh, in England at the same time. They did do a few shows. They did a stint in Germany and... He did some shows in England, but never crossed paths. So, uh, Miguel Migu uh, has asked, uh, maybe this has got an answer somewhere, but who's a dream match for you, Mike? I I don't know. I have too many to name. Uh, I have a dream rematch, which is Kenny Omega. I mean, he has been having some of the best matches in wrestling consistently for several years, and I think what he's doing right now is really fantastic. And uh, that's a rematch I want more than pretty much any other match. Yeah. Uh, yes, Space King Bobby, uh, the guest today is uh, Speedball Mike Bailey, who is a very popular, well-beloved uh, independent wrestler. Mm. Well, thank you. I'm at Speedball Bailey on Twitter and Instagram. I also have a Twitch channel here, Speedball Bailey, which if you would go and follow, that would be much appreciated. Yeah. You should. If you like Donkey Kong Country games, then it's the channel for you. Yes. Occasional Donkey Kong Country games. 
I'm still... <laughs> I'm a little bit all over the place with games. We did watch some wrestling for the first time on the channel oh, yeah, yesterday you, you, after I got sick of dying in uh, DKC3. Because you watched that fantastic uh, Ken, uh, Ricky Marvin match. Yes, we did. We also watched Minoru Suzuki versus Mio Shirai, which is Io Shirai's sister. And we watched Akito versus Asuka in a one light tube match where <laughs> you, if you break the light tube, you lose. One of my favorite matches ever. Yeah, I, I like that. It was a very interesting one. Like, I like, I like to see matches like that where they put a bit of thought into trying something a bit different. Yes. Oh, oh, there we go. Ultimate weapon. I did it. Okay. Big highlight of the stream. And followed with a moonsault. Okay, there's a combo I haven't done in a long time. Oh, was I going for it again here? Uh, the yep. sliced bread PK combo that I haven't done in very many years until today. See, that's the kind of thing, like, you can set it so that you always follow the sliced bread with the PK. Right. That's the kind of thing you can set up in it. Very handy thing. Is Mao with an unusual Pele kick. So I could see him doing that. I'm glad we've gone to the outside as much as we have. Because I feel like we would if this were a real match. Yeah. So it doesn't end by count out. There we go, Moonsault double knees. And ankle lock in, but not the legal man. Or not on the legal man, rather. I mean, the rate this is going, oh. I can see it getting a high rating. Running step up kick, which is using my comeback with another Moonsault knees. See, I like my moveset here. Very well done. I mean, I, I did. Like, I didn't make this Mike Bailey, but I did go in and, like, sort of update the moveset a bit. Especially there with you stuff... You did a great job. Yeah, with stuff that got made in Movescraft that isn't in the default game, like the Moonsault into the knees. I do hope I can get Uno to do one of these at some point because I do. I'm a big fan of his. Oh, I'm sure he would. He dodged that one. If you caught him around fighting back, I'm sure he would love to. Hmm. Because as I said, that's the whole deal. Just like pick whatever charity the guest wants, and we'll do it for them. Yep. And as a reminder, uh, the donation link below the stream is for the uh, Centre Multi-Ethnique de Quebec who help immigrants get settled in the Quebec area. Great job saying that in French, by the way. Thank you. I mean, I don't watch hockey that often, but when I do, I am a <laughs> Montreal fan, so... Very good. See, I am not. I'm not a big hockey fan, which is surprising to most people. Oh, that's the default uh, donation link, Morrigan. One second. We got people posting the link there. Thank you. Much appreciated. Any donation is incredibly appreciated. Yeah, I'm I, like I'm not a huge hockey guy, but Montreal were my team basically because 
Uh, they were the team I always used to go on NHL on the Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> Counts broken left and right. You are hitting a lot of finishers here. Oh, too close to the ropes. I'm way into this. Get long, almost 30 minutes. Well, it is the main the event. Main events by yeah. Do they by default go longer? Uh, not by default, but they like usually it's like matches that go longer are usually like tag matches or six man or eight man or whatever. Right. Yeah, you want to know the reason that I went Montreal in that game, Firehawk? It was because that was where the Mountie was from. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. And even as a kid, the Mountie always made me laugh and I never knew why. Not to be confused with the Mounties, who are an actual law enforcement agency. Right, the RCMP, yeah. as we call them here. Like honestly, when I was younger, a lot of my geography knowledge came from like wrestling hometowns and stuff. So mine came from The Simpsons. Oh, was that one of their finishers on the floor? It that was I just no sold. Yeah, hmm. which is I weird. How that's going to affect the rating? Because it should hurt more because it's on the floor. Absolutely. That rhymes, Marge, and you know it rhymes. Admit it. Another one told me. No, well, the way it ended up, Grunion, was he ended up having to drop the gimmick because of a lawsuit from the actual uh, uh, RCMP. Which it's is very, very funny. Yeah, which is why the Quebecers theme was were not the Mounties. Oh, oh. Well, putting over your boys in the main event, you know. I really let Mo down here. Oh no, I feel terrible. But, you know, you know, putting other people over in the main event is what a pro does, right? See, 100%. 100%. Absolutely. See, I would have been really, really disappointed with anything less. There we go. So your overall rating 84.8. Great success! Let's see what all kind of weird nonsense happens this month. Falaba is the Impact Champion. Okay. Def Yamasan and Izumi won the Stardom Tag Titles. <laughs> Thank you for the bits, Kiwi. Oh yeah, for some reason Gatomu signed Christian in this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know, why not? I feel like he would he would belong there. Yeah. EC3 left Impact. Yamato left Dragon Gate. All right. Now, there is a tradition that we usually end these streams on. Yes. Uh, but first, we were something we were talking about earlier, which is you want to book a death match. Yes, I do. And because we're not encumbered by fire promoter uh, thing here, you can have anyone in the game. As long as I've got them in the game, you can book them. Okay, then can I can I wrestle Veda Scott in an explosion death match? You certainly can. I would love to. Yeah. 
and it's here you'll see how extensive the roster actually is. That is pretty impressive. And that's just the free agents. Which Veda Scott is not in because I believe I've got her on the Shimmer roster. That makes sense. I would watch that at CM Chainsaw. Christian versus Chris Brooks. Chris, uh... Christian be like, versus Chris Brooks. I would watch. I would absolutely mm -hmm. watch that. Oh, hello, Brazilian Fury. No, no worries for being late, but we're we're doing a bit of silly stuff now that the show's over, uh, including this death match with Mike Bailey versus Veda Scott. Yep. And we're ready to go. So who do you see winning this one, uh, Mike and Chat? Well, I think Veda has a lot more deathmatch experience than I do, so I think she's the clear favorite in this. But let's see. This match, of course, officiated by our uh, deathmatch official, Judgmental. Judgmental, okay. Great outfit. And I like that this match is sponsored by uh, Gay Burger, among others. Mm hmm. Super Wrestle. Super Pro Wrestle, which is just the name for the promotion of the dumb stuff we run on our own streams. Booze Juice, Pie Pal. So I would like to know more about this canvas. We just made up a bunch of sponsors. Right. So, yes. Gay Burger came from myself and a friend. Oh no, it just exploded! Oh yeah, you're I'm bleeding. covered in blood now. Oh uh, no! So, Gay Burger came from uh, myself and a friend playing the game Fall Guys. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, the, one of the outfits that he uh, they put together was a burger but with a tutu that basically okay. had the pride colors on it sure. uh, and them being LGBT themselves decided to start referring to themselves in the game as the gay burger which I said would be a great sponsor for my wrestling shows and thus we made the logo I think it's just a great overall name uh, Pie Pal uh, an imaginary service where you can send your friends pastries through the internet Yes, okay. You know, uh, you eject the CD drive and there's a pie there waiting for you. Tab? Where's my tab? <laughs> we have the one at the bottom there, which is uh, physical fitness for freebooters, which is Parati's. We have uh, the video game com company, Yikes, new phone, who dis? Yes. The one covered by the chair is Jazz Mags, which is Sexy Woman Playing uh, Brass Instruments magazine. Okay. Could uh, we add Pinocchio Hoes, the all puppet brothel? That's a great idea. I love that. 2.9, back to back near falls. Pinocchio Hoes is the best. I mean, Boost Juice, uh, Boost Juice, very obvious parody of Ico Pro, obviously. Right. We got uh, Whole Snacks Boutique, and the one at the bottom, which, the very bottom, which you can't see, is French Fries, French Fries. Okay, yeah. Which, which came from an image, and I can't even remember why I made it, but it was, <laughs> you know the, the fry from Futurama? Uh, yes. The uh, Take My Money? Yes. I can't remember why, but I put a baguette in his hand and gave him a striped jersey, a beret, and a garlic <laughs> necklace. And decided to make it French fries, French fries. An advert. I love it. There we go. Finally, Veda gets exploded. I mean, I'll be honest, most of the, the jokes 
on our streams with original characters and whatnot are just like dumb in jokes that we've decided to put in a wrestling game. <laughs> Which is the best way to do it, I suppose. It oh, there's the explosion. What happens now? The ref is down. He's hurt. We're well, only going to stay down for about 10 seconds. Here's the finish. Okay. Yeah, because well, there you go. Very often with the explosion, one of them will just simply not get back up. Right. Wow, that was intense. Okay. Oh, that's Hot finish. That's a good one, Chainsaw. Uh, a soup land, soap land, a place where you can get a sexy massage and some good minestrone. <laughs> I love it. Okay, and the, the, the traditional way of finishing is I'm going to ask very simply. Yes. Mike, Speedball Bailey, who would you like to fight a yes. bear? Who would I like? Hmm. In a shoot fight. Does it have to be a one on one shoot fight? It does, I'm afraid, because I've got the mods deactivated. Right, okay. So I feel like. One of the, hmm, one of the TDTs, well, the TDTs did turn us down. Oh, so However, one of the tabernacle. Oh, yeah. right. Let's try Matsu. Let's see if Matsu Sanjo can fight the bear. Let's see if who? Sorry, Matsu. Oh. Of the tabernacle team. Uh, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. All That's right. for saying no and ruin my booking. So here we go. Matthew uh, St. Jacques from Team the Tabernacle versus a giant bear in a shoot fight. There we go. The first match I wanted to book was actually Tabernacle the Team versus the Steiner Brothers Ooh. for obvious reasons. They ruined that for me, so now he has to fight a bear. Sorry. Yeah. Your referee in charge of the action, as always is the fireman from uh, uh, the giant from Twin Peaks. Oh, shout out to Mad's dad in the chat who very well may be the first person to ever use that emote oh. that I made myself and that finally just got approved after many, many days of waiting. Excellent. <laughs> Shrek balls. It oh. looks even better than I thought it would. Oh, so see if you can spot Chris Hero in the crowd. Okay. I think I can. See him with his legs crossed there? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's supposed to be him, but it looks like him, and that's all we need. <laughs> did you get to ask him? Did he say whether or not it was him? Uh, I did not. I've not... I've not... Well, then again, like, the last time I spoke to him was before he went back to WWE. Uh. Because obviously he did uh, Discovery a few times. Uh, very nice man. <laughs> very. He's seated on the other side of the cage as well. Yeah, I mean, this is such a big attraction, you had to buy two seats. Wow. I mean, some wrestlers have beaten the bear, I should point out. Um, like, Max the Impaler beat the bear. Very good. Um... Who else? Uh, Chris Hero beat the bear. Good. Uh, Effie beat the bear. As he would. Wait, was that a weapon? Uh, it was just an extra sharp claw, it's fine. Okay, very good. No problem then. In actuality, it's a uh, safe. It's supposed to be like the uh, Sushi Onita spot. Yes. But I uh, see. We, we, uh, for the sake of a bear fight, it's an extra sharp claw. Okay. Double bare knees right there. If anyone, by the way, doesn't know, Tabagna the team is one of the... No, they're the best tag team in Canada. So go and watch some of their stuff on YouTube if you've never seen them, because it is worth it. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not familiar, but I will absolutely look them up. I mean, one, of my, one of my favorite things about this is, like, quite often I will learn about someone new. So... 
I mean, it, hell, everyone in the game, I'm not familiar with everyone in the game. There's like literally thousands of wrestlers in it. So yes. very often I do learn about new people and I, I go and look them up and they win a new fan in me. Oh yeah, Daniel Bryan beat the bear. Uh, Peyton Royce beat the bear. Volkan beat the bear? Yeah, I mean, that's Volkan, you know. That makes that that's the only one that makes sense so far. Everyone else is like, ah, oh, no, I'm pretty sure. But Volkan, yeah, Volkan. He probably did fight a bear. I mean, let's be honest, Volkan is a bear. Basically. For all intents and purposes, Volkan is a bear. Oh, that's a that's a good suggestion, uh, British. Has uh, Sakuraba faced a bear? I don't believe so. Ooh. See, that's one of those I'd be excited to see it in real life. I have wrestled Sakuraba in a tag team match once. Oh, that would have been good. We didn't interact all that much, but it was it was fun. Fun to say that I've wrestled with uh, Sakuraba. Runyon wonders if a Fire Pro edit of Willie Williams could beat the bear. I wonder if a Fire Pro edit of Groundskeeper Willie could beat the bear. Oh no, that's something we've got to book. And ha Spike Dragon, we do have a Willie Williams. Did he beat the bear? I mean, we're okay, in we the first. Yeah, I mean, this is the murder round. Basically okay, because um, it's very, very rare that any of the shoot fights we put on, whether involving a bear or otherwise, uh, go past the third round and does it again with a backslide of all things. Did he tap him out with a backslide? No, what it is, is... Is it when, a critical backslide? In a shoot fight in the game, it just basically keeps going until the next time they have no energy and they get knocked down, regardless of ah, what see. it is that knocks them down. So we've had right. a few weird ones like that. <laughs> All right. uh, is there anyone else you would like to fight a bear before we head away? <laughs> no, I think we're good. Oh, okay. So we'll wrap it there. Uh, I would like to say thank you very, very much to Speedball for joining me this evening. Uh, thank you for having me, and also big thank you to everyone who donated. Oh, of course. Uh, the uh, Centre Multi-Ethnique de Quebec, uh, the charity link is below. If you scroll below the stream, you go to the donate bit. You click there, that will take you to their donation page. It's not uh, obligatory, of course, ev like everyone's struggling right now, but if you enjoyed the stream, and if you can, throw a few quid their way. Uh, charities like that need all the help they can get, especially in times like now. Uh, so, before we go, Mike, where can people find you on the internet? I am at Speedball Bailey on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Speedball Bailey on Twitch, so if you could give me a follow, that would be much appreciated. I will probably be streaming around this time tomorrow. Um, also, if you're not familiar with my wrestling, please go and watch some of... Uh, some Speedball Mike Bailey matches on YouTube. I know there's some fun ones on there that you will enjoy. And if you do enjoy them, then uh, give them a share. Show, show your friends some Speedball Mike Bailey. I can personally verify. If you go and watch Speedball matches on YouTube, you'll enjoy them. And with that, we're going to finish up and we're going to do a raid. And we are going to raid uh, our friend, friend of the channel, friend of the stream, Rosemary, or Courtney Rush, as she's streaming right now, uh, claim, she claims that she just borrows Rosemary's uh, Twitch channel as Rosemary is more over. That's her words, not mine. Uh, she is streaming Skyrim, uh, one of her favourite games, and her streams are always funny because she's a funny woman. So go uh, tell her hello, fill her chat with bear emotes, and uh, yeah, just enjoy and follow her if you don't already, because she's a very cool woman. 
and we will I'll be back on yes chainsaw I will be back on tomorrow for Wrestleverse which is me streaming with characters created by myself created by some of our friends in the chat uh, we do match requests and stuff like that and we just kind of talk wrestling and have some fun uh, I'll catch you all next time bye thank you